Hey, buddy, got some money? Want to put it in play? This is not casino stuff. This is wild, intense, adrenaline-pumping action. Definitely not for the faint-hearted. It involves huge bets, rigged results, violence, and one of the worst of the Mexican drug cartel. Tonight, News 13 investigative reporter Larry Barker exposes a lawless empire in the heart of New Mexico. These are the images we all recognize. The crowds, the jockeys, and the racehorses. It's post time. No, not here. Here, in fact, our four-month-long undercover investigation exposes lawlessness in the New Mexico outback. It's about money, danger, animal cruelty, and drug trafficking. Every weekend, hundreds gather at crude raceways carved into the desert landscape for clandestine horse races. And what goes on here is right out of the Old West. It's a place where nobody plays by the rules because there are no rules. Who regulates racing at a bush track? No one. Vince Morris is the New Mexico Racing Commission's executive director. We have to maintain the safety of those horses, um, mostly the safety of those jockeys. We want to make sure that the integrity of the horse race itself is fair, not only to the owners, the trainers, but the betting public in general. We want to make sure that everything is on the up and up. What happens out at the bush track, your guess is as good as mine. The largest unregulated track in New Mexico features year-round racing six miles west of Las Lunas in Valencia County. Another facility runs weekend races east of Grants in Cibola County. Because they operate outside the law, reporters are not welcome. So News 13 went undercover to document what goes on here. On a typical Sunday afternoon, spectators travel hundreds of miles, often from across the border, to participate. In fact, it's not unusual to find find more people attending unlicensed racing than those at the Downs of Albuquerque. As many as a thousand spectators spend their Sunday afternoons playing the ponies here. Admission is 10 bucks for a full afternoon of racing in which two horses try to outpace the other for a few hundred yards. But the real draw of unlicensed racing is not the horses, it's the money. For example, while moonlighting at a clandestine track, this racehorse jockey admitted to the state police his illicit work earned him a half million dollars. This New Mexico horseman has been on the inside of several bush tracks. For his safety, we have obscured his identity. You're talking big money. You're talking thousands of dollars. On a popular horse, there's a lot of betting going on. Three or four thousand dollars, there's a lot of people betting on it against each other. On a typical day, hundreds of thousands of dollars changes hands. Can you win a lot of money at a bush track? Oh yeah, tax free. Jack McGrail runs the New Mexico Horsemen's Association, representing licensed trainers and owners. Many of the bets are just mano a mano. They're a wager between the owner of one horse and the owner of the other horse, or the people who know that owner and they wager amongst themselves. And they can be very substantial wagers, uh, which can lead to substantial problems. What happens if somebody doesn't pay? They get in a fight, they get in an argument, it's a lot of arguing. A lot of fights. It's not just fights. There are shootings and stabbings as well. In fact, four years ago, one man was murdered following a dispute at a bush track in Las Lunas. And because the activity here is unregulated, anything goes. That includes openly fixed races and drugged horses. See for yourself. Here and here and here. They drug them. I've seen them drug them. They do poke them with a needle and then they get pretty crazy. They do hide it a little bit, but everybody knows it's fair game to them that they drug their horses, you know. I think there are dangers to the horses and the participants, and I think those dangers are manifest when you have nobody regulating what can go into that horse, which may allow an injured horse to keep running, which could then possibly throw the jockey, could injure both the jockey and the horse. There's no regulation, so who knows what they're doing to these horses, and then when they bring them on our tracks, they break down, they die, they have to be euthanized, so who knows what happens. And there are other dangers, such as shoddy track surfaces and inexperienced participants. This jockey is just nine years old. This underground track operated on weekends on Parajito Mesa in Bernalillo County. As many as a thousand people 
filled this facility. Admission fees were collected at the gate for a full day of unregulated racing. Sheriff's deputies estimated hundreds of thousands of dollars exchanged hands. The track's owner was a horseman named Omero Varela. And although the facility was shut down two years ago, Varela resurfaced earlier this year when he was arrested by the DEA on federal <laughs> drug trafficking charges. According to the DEA, Omero Varela is associated with the violent Sinaloa drug cartel and its notorious hitman, Jose Antonio Torres Marufo. Varela's racetrack connections have not gone unnoticed by the DEA. Clearly, drug organizations in New Mexico and in Texas and other places are involved with these racetracks. Just as clearly, they're involved with the Sinaloa cartel. Keith Brown is DEA's assistant special agent in charge. These unlicensed uh, horse racing operations are the perfect place for, for drug dealers to sort of infiltrate, become legitimate or quasi-legitimate, and not stand out. We're talking hundreds of thousands of dollars generated as profit for these individuals that in many cases they turn and invest into these tracks. Even though underground tracks brazenly operate all over New Mexico, they are difficult for law enforcement to shut down. Following an investigation in 09, the state police arrested four people for violating New Mexico's Racing Act at this covert track outside Roswell. However, in court, the entire case rested on a single legal technicality. Because the state could not prove that the horses being run on the illicit track were racehorses, all charges were dropped and the case was dismissed. The Chavez County track was reopened and the unlicensed activity continues today. The Racing Commission regulates every track in the state except these underground facilities. They stand as islands of lawlessness. Come Sunday, hundreds of race fans will pour through these gates, and all law enforcement can do is stand at the fence and watch. Larry Barker, KRQE News 13. The Racing Commission is pushing for legal changes that would let law enforcement go in and go after these tracks and the people who run them. Mark, another.